Welcome to the I Was Born to Win show with James A. Smith. It's a great day to be alive and get a DWI. Daily winner's inspiration. Get a DWI every day at IWasBornToWin.com. It's time for you to win more out of life. Think it. Say it. Believe it and live it. You really were born to win. Good morning. I'm James A. Smith here to kick off your Monday morning, hopefully, with some fantastic inspiration. I am excited about our DWIs this week. Because some of you may remember, I flew out to Dallas about three or four weeks ago and had the privilege of interviewing my hero, Mr. Zig Ziglar. I know you guys are going to be excited about what you're going to hear today. I want to preface this by saying this. Zig is 82 years young today, and a few years ago he fell down some steps, damaged his brain, ended up having to get a shunt put in his brain to help drain fluids. He's having challenges with short-term memory loss. Now, we edited the interview a little bit, but not a whole lot. As a matter of fact, I even left some stuff in there on purpose. Zig repeats himself today. Now, the reason I thought it was important to leave this in here was so many of us love Zig. He has millions of fans. He's a man of character and just an awesome leader and motivator. You know, the thing I got the most out of my visit was the fact that when Zig repeated himself, what I continued to hear. You know, if you're if you're if you have a short term memory loss, obviously you're not going to be conscious of what you said four or five minutes ago. So it stands to reason that the stuff that continues to come out is going to be the stuff that that you've got packed in your heart the most. You know, kind of like the default material. This is not new material. This is the stuff that's stored in your heart that consumes it the most. It's bubbling out. And I was fascinated to see what continues to bubble out of the heart of Zig. And I believe that you'll agree with me after you hear this interview throughout the week why this is the man that he has been. Without further ado, let's go on over to the interview. Today I am joined by a most unique guest. He's a best-selling author. He's written 28 books. He's traveled over 5 million miles over the last 40 years, sharing a message of hope and encouragement He's been married over 60 years, a father of four. I want to welcome none other than the master of motivation, Mr. Zig Ziglar. Thank you so much for being with me this morning, Zig. Uh, James, it's a delight. Matter of fact, to get my age, it's a delight to be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Zig, you're 82 years young, is that correct? Uh, absolutely, and uh, just my career is just taking off. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to get serious. <laughs> I'm about to get serious, Absolutely. Well, Zig, it is just an absolute honor to have you with us this morning. We're doing a series entitled Pain for the Proper Purpose is Productive. And this series is designed to encourage folks to go through the pain if there's a reason to go through the pain because life is full of pain and life is full of struggles. And I'm just so tickled that you're going to be able to share some of those struggles with us today. You've Your last book you've written if I'm not mistaken, is entitled Embrace the Struggle. That's exactly right. It sure is. Zig, I've heard you talk about this several times. You were five years old and you lost your dad. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh huh. Do you remember at that time if it was painful or not, or were you too young to remember that? I was probably too young to remember, but uh, I do remember the grief that was shared by a lot of other people. But uh, my mother was a very wise lady. She only had a fifth-grade education, but she knew the Bible, and she was one of the sweetest people and the most loved people that I've ever known, of course. And uh, it's just, you know, uh, she really built a foundation for us. And uh, I'd just like to share one little thing she always taught us, uh, tell the truth and tell it ever. 
costeth what it will. For he who hides the wrong he did does the wrong thing still. Then she'd nail it down by saying, and if your word is no good, eventually you're no good. And I bet I heard that one a hundred and some many times. That's awesome, Zig. I've heard you say that before too. Zig, you know when 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 people refer to Zig Ziglar, I know I know I'm guilty of this as well. They say he's he's unique. He's been specially blessed. There's only he's one of a kind. He's amazing. But today I want to talk to you about uh some challenges you've been through in life because uh, sometimes people can look at other people and think, oh, every, every, they just live in a life of dream and they don't have a lot of struggles. You are the master of being consistent. I've heard Brian Flanagan say that you're the most consistent human being he's ever met. Yeah. That means you've obviously come up with some system or some method for facing struggles instead of getting off the path. Could you share with us what what you believe has helped you so much to be able to stay on course, and when there's obstacles or when there's a struggle or when there's some pain in your life, what kind of system has helped you to go through that pain instead of run from it? Well, I believe to begin with, uh, my mother, my dad died when I was five, but my mother was very wise. She knew the Bible. And she, if I heard her say it once, I heard her say it a thousand times, tell the truth and tell it ever costeth what it will. For he who hides the wrong he did does the wrong thing still. And if your word is no good, eventually people will know that you're no good. Amen. Amen. Zig, you've been married over 60 years, I believe 62 years, to that beautiful woman that you refer to as the redhead. Absolutely. And she's the prettiest girl I've ever seen (laughs) and the smartest. Uh, I can tell you I saw her on September 15th, 1944, 9.08 p.m., YWCA, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, I was in the military then, and they, they were having a party for the military at that point in World War II. And when I saw her that night, uh, I, I finagled around after I had met her and uh, found out that she was going to spend the night with her girlfriend right. uh, next door next door to the dorm that we were uh, in ourselves in the military. And uh, when I saw her, I got her phone number. I rode the bus home with her. When I got there, the house was locked. And so I climbed up on the outside wall (laughs) and let her and her girlfriend in their own house, you know. And But then I obviously I I knew where she lived, got her phone number, and uh, two years, two months, and 11 days later, uh, she finally said, okay, I do. And that's when we got married. That's beautiful. So so for those two two years and two months— I'm and 11 days. And 11 days. <laughs> I guess you had to go through some challenges and some struggles during that time to court her, but that, that sounds like that was some pain for the proper purpose. Uh, well, it was not a pain. It was a privilege because I knew <laughs> every time I showed up uh, at her door, I knew she was going to go with me. And, uh, man, alive, that was no pain involved there. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Now, now, Zig, I, I've heard you talk about how much you love your wife, and so many people have heard, and you've written books about that as well. So let me ask you a question that someone may be, be listening to this. They may be going through some challenges in their marriage. Yeah. Ha, has it always been beautiful, or have you and Miss Jean uh, went through some tough times? Uh, we went through some tough times, but it was not with each other. The career was not going well initially, but I persisted, and... Uh, She never once said, honey, why don't you get something else to do? Uh, I was just absolutely committed to my career in sales and teaching. And so I thought of that all of these years and still do. That's beautiful. You said you had challenges, but not with each other. That's right. Oh, no, no way. Incidentally, one of the things I learned early on was she was very bright. She was the fifth smartest in a class of 400. I was in the part of the class that made the top half possible. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'd have been some kind of an idiot if I didn't talk to her a whole lot. And we, to this day, after 62 years of marriage, we still talk about everything because I really did learn that the intelligence of the man and woman are different. But if they are in love and in marriage, 
the benefits are absolutely astronomical. They're bigger for both husband and wife. That is beautiful. Zig, you're a uh, father of four children. Now, you just said that you, you love teaching and you've been speaking. When your children were growing up, did you find yourself lecturing them like you've lectured the rest of the world? And did they, did they, were they receptive to that? Or did you have a typical challenge with teenagers? Uh, you know, very few uh, challenges. Uh, uh, one of the children uh, got involved with some dude I certainly didn't like, and I <laughs> <laughs> and I discouraged that real big, <laughs> and uh, they 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 broke off, uh, and I was glad of that. You wrote a book called I think you wrote a book. I know you've got this on on CD. How to Raise Positive Kids in a Negative World. Is that also in a book? Yes, it is. To the, to the parents that are out there today raising children in this world today, what, what, would, what would be a little bit of uh, encouragement that you'd like to share with them? The thing I'd like to encourage them is to always believe in your children and always tell them how much you love them. Uh, my wife and I have always awakened our children you know, when school was in or whatever it was, and we always awakened them slowly and lovingly. And we would always say, uh, today is such a beautiful day, and you're going to have a great time at school today. Or in the community today, you're going to have fun. Your job is there. You're going to be delivering your paper or whatever it is. A word of encouragement always was part of our regular start in our life. And with my wife and myself, uh, to this day, and we've been married uh, over 60 years, as you know. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, I start every day telling her how pretty she is, how much I love her, and how special she is. That's beautiful. Uh, I think husbands, you know, when they get the girl to say yes, uh, then after the honeymoon is over, they quit courting. <laughs> That's a huge mistake. And let me tell you what the biggest mistake it causes. The intelligence of the man and the woman are different. But if they're on the same page and in love and share with each other and that together they make the big decisions, the marriage is going to be better, the career is going to be better, and the reputation is going to be better. That's awesome. Zig, anybody that listens to you, they absolutely know that you are a man of great faith. You share it all the time. I've got a question for you. Have you went through any types of struggles with your faith or keeping your faith, or in your career, has it had any conflict with, with your career? Uh, it has some questions, but never any conflict, because by the ta- that time in my career, people knew that when I talked, I was going to talk about my faith. And uh, I had one instance where the company said, now, uh, we would really appreciate it if you would not talk about your faith at all. And I said, well, let me make a suggestion for you. Uh, get another speaker because I'm not going to take my time trying to motivate and inspire and encourage people if I can't tell the truth. That would not be proper for me. And so I would just simply say, you know, get somebody else. And uh, I I followed that all of my life. You said that you were one of the founding fathers of the National Speakers Association Right. And some of your friends, I believe you said, that's suggested correct. that you leave your faith out of the deal. Yep, that's right. And uh, the Holy Spirit instantly interceded and said, that's the worst advice you'll ever get. I've always, from day one, after that elderly black lady led me to Christ, I've always, always let it be crystal clear who I was and whose I was. And I've not had to solicit a speaking engagement in years and years and years and years. People, and I I try to get my Christian brothers to always remember this, people are always interested in truth. They're not interested in those bad stories and all that kind of stuff, you know. That is awesome, Zig. Zig, a few years ago, you fell down some stairs. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think I've heard you talk about this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
uh, it wasn't a pleasant fall. I've had the other fall I had when I fell for the redhead. Now that was a wonderful <laughs> fall, <laughs> but falling down those stairs, fortunately nothing was broken, and uh, you know I didn't hurt. I mean I didn't feel the hurt very right. much, but there was no damage really done. So I'm very grateful for that. Now I've heard you talk about this recently. You said when you fell, you you hit every step all the way down. You didn't miss a one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And it felt like I hit some of them three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> now, Zig, today when you go out and do these Get Motivated seminars, your daughter's traveling with you. Yeah. And you and her sit on stage, and she's interviewing you. Right. And you're you're not up there on stage by yourself anymore, jumping around like you've done for so many years. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, I understand that now you and your daughter are reaching a different crowd and which this is what motivated you to write your book, Embracing the Struggle. Could you tell us a little bit about this book? Well, the book is Embracing the Struggle, and uh, it's one of those things. But, you know, everybody has struggles from time to time. Then they're given a choice. They can either respond to it and say, well, you know, I don't like this, but here's what I'm going to do about it to solve it. Now, if you complain about it, all that does is make the struggle worse and keep staying around a whole lot longer. I can look you straight in the eye right now, and we're not but a few feet apart, and say to you that I never worry. And the reason I never worry is because I've already won. I know exactly where I'm going when I close my eyes for the last time. Why should I worry? I've had a wonderful life here, and I'm still as busy as a one-armed man calling on twin sisters <laughs> and having more fun than anybody I know. <laughs> Zig, you are just full and full of these one-liners. You know, I've had a saying for a long time, when bad things happen that you don't like, you don't complain about it, you respond instead of reacting you see, respond means that you're going to say, well, you know, I don't like this, but here's the way I'm going to solve it, or this is the way I'm going to handle it. If you react, that's negative, then all that does is make the struggle even worse. Wow. It makes a difference. Your attitude is what I'm really talking about there. And incidentally, always, I like to encourage people, if you're married, to always be careful about what happens at home. Always court your mate. Work with them as close as you can because what happens at home dramatically impacts what you can do out in the community and in your career. Zig, I've heard you say this in a seminar before. You get in there and you fire people up. And I've heard you say that now you're fired up right now, but in an hour or two from now you're going to be out stuck in traffic. So you're motivated now. And I've heard you say that motivation is not permanent. It's kind of like bathing. <laughs> you yeah. said you got to do it every all the time. That's right. Or eating. For the for the person <laughs> that hears this advice and they love the advice and they get excited about it. But then when it's time to respond and they don't feel like responding, what do you suggest for them when they don't it, they want to respond but they don't feel like it? Do you have a do you have a key for them? Well, <clears throat> I say that if you cannot respond to the obvious, then you've got another problem. And the next challenge you make will be even worse if you don't do the right thing now. So so you're saying if you don't respond, and, and I, I guess, Zig, when it's time to respond, you're thinking about this. Yeah. If you, you're saying if you don't respond to the problem, if you if you react which is negative and you run from it, You've added another problem. That's absolutely right. Or increase the problem, the one problem you do have. If you do respond properly instead of reacting, you solve the problem, and that is the way to live your life. One of the reasons I do certain things is, uh, for example, uh, when I'm on the road, and for years my wife uh, could not go with me. She goes with me everywhere now. Uh, but so many times we forget our families when we get out in the working world. And that's a huge mistake because 
if the husband and wife are on the same page in a loving relationship, their chances of not only being successful in their marriage, but their success in the community goes up a great deal when you do the right thing every day in every way. You know, I believe with all my heart when you talk about things like this, that if men courted their wives as avidly after they married them as they did before they got the wife, if they would continue that courtship, I start every day of my life telling my wife how much I love her, how pretty she is, and how glad I am. She is my sugar baby. That's what I call her all the time, <laughs> sugar baby. Here, here's another question, Zig. What is the single greatest inspiration for the path that you have chosen in your life? I believe I, I probably know you probably already talked about this, but yeah. Oh, well. This My inspiration is I believe with all of my heart that each of us are put on earth for a purpose. My purpose always has been to help other people get what they want. My favorite quote, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Mm. When you focus on what you can do for others, that takes all the things off of yourself. Uh, you're not saying, I'm the answer to everything. You're saying simply, if you'll do the right thing all the time, your career will be better, your marriage will be better, your success will be better, your worries will be dramatically less. I can look you straight in the eye, and we're just a few feet apart, and tell you, I never worry. When I lay down at night, because of my life and because of who I married, the right girl that I've never loved another one, hmm. uh, I never worry. I know everything's going to be all right. I've committed my life. I've made the right decision. I have a Lord and Savior that's going to take care of me when I close my eyes for the last time here on earth. So why should I worry? That's beautiful. Zig, what is your favorite hobby or thing to do for fun? Well, uh, to be honest, my favorite hobby, hobby is to play golf. Uh, I'm a fairly good golfer. My son's a good golfer, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't play as much as I used to. But I always enjoyed golf and uh, was pretty good at it. Not real good, but uh, fairly good and enjoyed every time I picked up those sticks. And it's uh, been a few weeks since I picked them up, so it won't be much longer before I'll pick them up again, uh, <laughs> like maybe even this week. I've, I've got you. Zig, in, in closing here, I've got a couple other questions I'd like to ask you. Zig, being the master of motivation, what has been the accountability system for you? Because... You've been the one delivering the motivation. What has been the system of accountability for you? It comes from my mother. From childhood, and I'm the 10th of 12 children, I asked her one time, I said, Mom, why so many? And she said, well, son, where do you think I should have stopped? <laughs> uh, I did not think after number nine. Now, you can absolutely uh, count on that. I've always been very committed to the truth. Uh, one of the reasons I've never read a novel is because some of those writers are so good, man, they can make everything sound good. I'm not going to risk my reputation by reading something that might put something in my mind that I would forget was not the truth. I'm only interested in truth. Wow. Everywhere. What, a, what, a, what an amazing system right there of accountability. You're saying if there's a, even a possibility that you could get exposed to something that's not truth, you're going to stay away from it and not even play around with it. Absolutely. No question about that. I learned that from my mother. You know, She was so straightforward and so much loved and was so wise. Only a fifth grade education, but she really knew that Bible. She took us children to church every Sunday morning. And when things happened, and sometimes they did, example, uh, at our school, while I was in school, high school, uh, we had the uh, swing sets there that kids, uh, you know, would swing. Right. And one night uh, after scout meeting, uh, I stayed behind, 
And uh, during the course of that little deal that we made there, and I didn't do anything wrong, but some of the kids I was with uh, broke uh, some of the fixtures that were there. Right. And uh, when I got home and uh, they let us know, uh, everybody that was there had to pay a few dollars. I've forgotten how many it was. It wasn't many, uh, five, six, or whatever. Right. And when I got home, when they uh, told my mother what had happened, my mother really got after me. She said, uh, son, you know, after scout meeting, you were supposed to come straight home. We don't want to have this anymore. And she really got after me big time. Be very careful what happens after scout meeting uh, because that was the wrong thing to do. They might remember that, and you might have led somebody else to do the same thing. Wow. Zig, today people are claiming there's a problem with the recession. Attitudes are down. Um, People are losing homes. Homes are being foreclosed. Interestingly enough, I just saw a a survey. 50,000 people were asked, who do you blame for the bad economy? Do you blame the government? Do you blame Wall Street? Or do you blame greedy consumers? And unfortunately, 82% said they blamed the government. In other words, it was somebody else's problem for for all the struggles we're having. What would you say, 82%, if there's 82% of the people out there are thinking that we're having these problems, but it's somebody else's fault, what would you say to the person that's listening to this and saying, you know, all oh, that sounds good, but I'm about to lose my home, or I've lost my job, I've been unemployed for six months, What word of encouragement would you have for them, Zig? I would say to them, you've got two choices. One, you can respond and say, here's the way I'm going to deal with this problem. Or you can react, which is negative, and say, oh, what can I do? Everything's going to pot. That's ridiculous. It really is. This is America. We're free people. We have the privilege to make the choice of what we want to do and what we want to believe. I can look you straight in the eyes, and we're only a few feet apart, and tell you I never worry for the reason that I am going to do my very best, and I'm going to be doing the right thing in the right way, and that's the way I'll be able to sleep tonight. I have never for years and years and years. I haven't had to solicit a speaking engagement now in years and years and years because they know, number one, I'll show up, number two, I'll be prepared, and number three, I will be telling truth and truth only. That's beautiful. Zig, I thank you so much, and I'm sure I'm speaking for thousands of your fans. Yeah. I thank you so much for yeah. being with us today. Well, let me interrupt you and say... Uh, don't thank me, let me thank you. See, you can get along, and the media can get along very well without me, but I cannot get along and make progress unless I get the publicity and the interest of people like you. So I thank you for giving me this privilege. Well, I am extremely humbled, Zig. You are a hero of mine, and in, in in the most truthful way I could ever say it, I have a love for you from the bottom of my heart that I think is as much love as a stranger could ever have for another human being, and you have touched my life in so many ways, and I don't think I'm alone in in saying that, and I thank God for you and what you've done and your convictions for helping us. Well, I'm sure grateful for you saying that, but let me tell you something again. God has blessed me with the right person or people All of my life, my mother was very wise. My first boss in the grocery store was a wonderful Christian man who guided me, treated me like a son. As a matter of fact, I've named my son after Mr. John R. Anderson. John Thomas Ziegler is the one I'm talking about. That's beautiful. Zig, thank you again for joining us. Friends, pain for the proper purpose really is productive. Get you some goals, get you some visions, because if you keep your eyes on those, those goals and visions will pull you through these struggles today. It will, as Zig's book says, it will help you embrace 
the struggle. If you're interested in Zig's book, you can go to Ziggler.com. Zig, I don't believe it's even published yet, is it? Not yet. But let me also put that one other thing to him. And if you're always careful to solicit and work hard to have the home court advantage, because if you've got a good marriage, if you are married, when you court properly and honor your family and honor your vows there, then the outside world is going to notice it, and you'll have another benefit because of it. After 62 plus years, I still Court that pretty red-headed wife of mine every day. Tell her how much I love her, how glad I am that she said yes to me after two years, two months, and 11 days of relentless pursuit. <laughs> you know what, Zig? This is, the, this is just off the cuff here. I'm just listening to you. You know, it's amazing. All the advice you give is not rocket science. Nope. It's, it's good old-fashioned, good ethical Good, the clean, the pure, and the positive advice that you, you you constantly talk about it. It's not like there's a big secret, is it? No, it sure is not. Uh, all they got to do is the right thing, the right way, all the time at home and on the job. Same person goes to both places. They should act the same way, treat their family fully as well and better than they treat anybody else and always love everybody. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Again, Zig, thank you for joining us. Friends, I hope you'll uh, embrace the struggle today. Life is always going to be full of struggles. And if we learn that thirst is what makes water valuable, if it wasn't for thirst, water wouldn't be that valuable to us. It's cold that makes warm feel so good. If we were never cold, warm wouldn't do a whole lot for us. So remember today as you're going through those struggles that there is a proper purpose and a lot of pain out there. And instead of running from it, do like Zig has done and do like Zig has taught us. Embrace that struggle. Zig's book will be out on Ziggler.com if you want to check it out or anything else. I have everything the man has ever written and spoken. I just keep it with me all the time, and I listen to it. Zig, I listen to you while I'm sleeping because, <laughs> because I trust what you're saying. I listen to the Bible, and I listen to you because I trust what's going in my mind is going to help me in life. And, and friends, we just want to encourage you to embrace the struggle that pain for the proper purpose is productive. Thank you very much, and go out there and knock them alive. Thank you for tuning in to the I Was Born to Win show with James A. Smith. This has been another DWI to help you win more out of life. DWI, daily winner's inspiration. Get your DWI today at IWasBornToWin.com. It's time for you to win more out of life. Think it. Say it. Believe it and live it. You really were born to win.